So this is Telecom TV. I'm here with Charlie Ashton. He's Senior Director of Business Development at Napatec. Charlie, great to see you again. Thanks good, very much good, for joining us. Good to us. see you, Ray. It's always a pleasure. So uh, tell us about Napatec. What is the, uh, the business problem that Napatec is solving for network operators? Well, if we think about what's going on in the telecom space right now, you know, when the telcos started to roll out 5G, they had to make these massive investments, right, both in spectrum and in infrastructure, and especially in, in RAN infrastructure. But having made all those investments, they really haven't seen much of an improvement, if any, in their business. I mean, if you think about the consumer side of the business, average revenue per user or ARPU is essentially flat like it's always been. And there's a lot of promising enterprise opportunities, but they haven't really materialized yet. So as the telcos continue to roll out their new 5G infrastructure, maximizing the return on investment on that infrastructure is just really critical given everything that's going on within their business right now. What elements of, of cost is Napatec able to address for the network operators? So one of the things that's new with 5G, right, compared to previous Gs, is that the packet core is not implemented in fixed function network appliances. It's implemented as pure software in a virtualized environment running on essentially standard servers. So the part of the problem that we're able to address is to help the carriers to optimize the utilization of those servers so that they can get the best possible return on investment for what is essentially data center infrastructure, you know, whether it's deployed at the edge or in the telco core. So exactly what technology is Napatec bringing to the table to address these issues? So what we bring to the table is our smart network interface cards. And so a smart network interface card from a hardware point of view is just like a standard network interface card. You know, it plugs into a PCI Express slot on the server and there's a couple of network ports on the back. The difference is with a standard network interface card, or sometimes those are called foundational NICs, all of the traffic comes from the network interface card up to the CPU on the server, which then has to process all of those networking and packet processing workloads. And that's not really what server CPUs were designed for. They're general purpose CPUs. And when you start loading them down with high traffic networking, you can very quickly consume all of those CPU resources. So what we do is we take the data plane for something like the user plane function within the packet core, and we offload the data plane to run on the smart NIC. And that has two immediate effects. Firstly, you get much higher performance for your packet core than you would in a pure software implementation. And secondly, it frees up your server CPUs to do the kind of things that they're good at, like running services and applications. For the network operators, how are they actually going about de deploying and making use of this technology? Yeah, that's a great question, because in general, the network operators, they're not gonna buy directly from us. They have their favorite set of software vendors who they license software from, and they have their favorite set of server vendors who they buy servers from. So our whole go-to-market is based on an ecosystem strategy, whereby we partner with the packet core software vendors to make sure their software can integrate with and take advantage of our offload technology, and then we partner with the server vendors to make sure that our, our cards can interface and be configured with, with those servers. So as a couple of examples on the packet core software side, we've announced partnerships with companies called companies like A5G Networks and Druid Software, and we have about eight more that are in progress right now, and soon we'll be able to announce those. And then on the server side, um, you know, again, we've announced partnerships with Advantech, Dell, Lana, and Contron, and we've got more of those that, that are in progress. So our whole goal is just to make sure that the, the carriers can consume our technology and benefit from our technology by licensing and purchasing products from their favorite vendors. We, have, we don't want to try to influence which vendors they select. So, of course, for the, the operators, um, you know, they're going to look at the economics of this and, and now more than ever, probably return on investment is incredibly high on the agenda. What kind of uh, ROI improvements is Napate able to offer? Well, so we did one study with, with one of our partners and um, we looked at the scenario of an edge data center serving 50,000 users with fixed wireless access, which is pretty much is the dominant 5G application, right? So we had, you know, an average, I think it was 20 megabits, you know, per subscriber average, average traffic. And when we did a comparison between the number of subscribers per server that you would see implementing that scenario with a pure software solution 
versus our offload technology. The improvement was somewhere between 46 and 47 times as many subscribers per server, which of course is massive. And then when you run that calculation through and you also start looking at things like CapEx, OpEx, and especially energy, in that scenario, we saw you know at least an 80% reduction um, in those three metrics too. So those are the kind of numbers that are very compelling you know, if you're a C-level exec at a carrier. Now, of course, your mileage is gonna vary a lot depending on the use case. And we've actually developed a fairly, a fairly sophisticated ROI modeling tool that allows us to sit down either with our partners or with the carriers and put in all the parameters for the scenario that they're interested in, in terms of user traffic and server costs and power consumption. And then they can see exactly what savings they're going to achieve in their specific scenario. Okay, interesting. Uh, and those are really uh, compelling numbers, there has to be they said. They do get people's attention. <laughs> yeah. we, we lead with that. We don't lead with the technology <laughs> story. We lead with how would you like to reduce your energy consumption by 80%? Well, and who's going to say no to exactly. that? Exactly. So uh, it, it sounds like uh, Napatech has been busy uh, building out it, its uh, ecosystem and, and getting partnerships uh, to go to market. Uh, What's next? So uh, what, what will 2024 bring? Yeah, I think you're right. Our biggest focus for 2023 has been, you know, execution on, on, the, the, on the deliverables from our side and also starting to put in place the partner ecosystem that is, is so critical to that strategy I, I just described. So in 2024, we're going to see a lot more of these partnerships come to fruition. We'll be announcing integrations with a lot more software partners and, and, and server partners. And we're going to see the first deployments of this technology through those partners. So the first deployments are probably going to be in private networks um, for some enterprise use cases that we're actively working on now, both with partners and with, and with end users. And then we'll start to see the first telco deployments also happening in 2024. So it's going to be a super exciting year for us. Okay, well, look forward to hearing all about those as they happen, Charlie. Thanks very much for joining us on Telecom TV. Great to see you as always. Thanks very much, Ray. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you.